Hi, and welcome to your 22nd iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to capture images from the user's photo library or the camera on their device, and then display that in an image on the screen. It's really simple using a UI image picking controller, and that's what we'll be doing today. So, open up Xcode and let's get started. Create a new Xcode project, and we'll just call this one Camera Picker. I always be creating it for iPhone and just doing my own organization name and everything, but again, all of those other options are up to you. We don't need to add any libraries for this, however, we do need to add a subclass in our viewcontroller.h. So after this line at interface, at the very end of that line, open a triangular bracket and type UI image pick a controller delegate, comma, UI navigation controller, not bar, delegate. And I'll explain all of this code in a moment. Let's also go into our storyboard and add an image view to display the image once we've taken it or got it from our photo library. So find your image view in your objects library and if you don't have that make sure you open up the inspector. And then get your image and drag it onto the screen. I'll just make mine full screen for now but obviously that's up to you. Now I'll go into your assistant editor and make sure it's set to automatic and viewcontroller.h. Then right click on the image view and drag it under the at interface line. Make sure it's set up as an outlet, a UI image view and storage is strong and we'll just call this image view. Now usually we'd enclose that in curly brackets rather than having it set out like an app property. However we're assigning it as a property uh, this time because it's a lot easier and in iOS 7 it enables you to do a whole lot more things and it's really good for passing data between views. We can now go into our viewcontroller.m and start adding the code to actually take the image or open the image library if there is no camera on the user's device. So in our view did appear method, which we don't yet have, we're going to add the code and it will just appear as soon as the app starts up. I'll explain why we're doing it in view did appear in a moment. So type dash void underneath view did load, dash void view did appear animated then open a curly bracket press enter and then inside those two curly brackets which will have now appeared type square bracket super view did appear and then inside the animated bubble type animated then add the closing square bracket and a semicolon now we can set up our UI image picker controller and display it on the screen <clears throat> so type UI image picker controller and we'll just call this image picker controller equals open two square brackets UI image picker controller alloc and then init and then close the final square bracket and add a semicolon then type image picker controller dot modal presentation style equals UI modal presentation and um, we'll just set it to be current context. And then add a semicolon. Then image picker controller dot delegate equals self. And that's why we set this to be a UI image picker delegate in our dot h file. And the reason we said to be a UI navigation controller delegate is because if the user uh, is not using the camera but rather they're using their photo library that will be displayed in a UI navigation controller. So although that's not essential to add that line of code you will get warnings if you don't and it's suggested that you do. It also means that you can customize say the top toolbar of the UI image picking controller to be a different color to just the plain white that it will be when you see it in a moment. Finally we can actually present the UI image picker controller. So type self present view controller You'll notice that there are two options. One is present modal view controller, but that has a red line through it, and one is present view controller. We'll use the second one because the first one has been deprecated, and it has been deprecated since iOS 5. The second one is pretty much the same, except you need to insert a completion at the end, and we'll just set that to be nil. So type image picking controller for the first bubble. For animator, let's type no, and for completion, type nil in lowercase. Then close that square bracket and add a semicolon. Let's run the application and see what that does. So I'm going to run it in the simulator, meaning that there will be no camera. So that means that the app will by default go to the photo library on the user's device. 
if you were to run this on a phone, it would by default go into the camera, and then the user could then select the photo library. So the first time you run it, you'll be asked to allow the application to access your photos. So click OK, and as you can see, I've got no photos on the simulator, but it seemingly has worked. However, when I click the cancel button, nothing actually happens, and there's a few small things like that which we really should fix up. So let's now add some dismiss methods, and we'll go from there. So the first thing we need to add is when the image picker clicks the cancel button, we need to detect that and then dismiss it. So do dash void image picker controller did cancel and then open square brackets and up to curly brackets and close them. And then here just type self dismiss view controller animated and for animated we will do yes and we won't do a completion. So once again type nil. We also need to set up the code to actually, if they select an image, to display that image. Well, first check that they've selected an image, then dismiss the image picker, and then display the image in that image view that we added to our storyboard file. So type dash void image picker controller did finish picking with media info. And then open curly brackets and press enter. Now inside here we need to create a UI image, and I'll explain all of this code in more detail in a moment. So UI image image equals info value for key UI image picker control picker controller original image and then close square brackets and add a semicolon and then we can do self dot image view dot image equals image and finally let's dismiss the camera picker. And by typing once again, self dismiss view controller animated, yes and nil. And add the square bracket. Now let's run the application once more. So we can see that we've got no photos. So before we do anything, we need to get some photos onto our phone. So let me show you how to do that. There's no easy way to get a photo onto the iOS simulator because there's no camera, so you can't just take a photo. Nor is there an email application, so you can't email them to yourself. However, there is one workaround. Once you've got an image, and I've just got mine on the desktop for easy access, click on it and drag it into the simulator window. The simulator will then open that image in Safari. Then, like any iOS device, if you hold down on the image and click Save Image, the image is then saved to your photo gallery. And to double check that that's the case, you can go into the Photos application, which does exist. And as you can see, that is our image. So if we go back to our Camera Picker application, and let's click Cancel and it should reappear, and I'll explain that in a moment, we can now see that we've got one gallery, our saved photos, and there's one image. So hopefully what will happen is when we click on this image, it will set that image view in our storyboard or in our view to be the same as this image. So click on it, and as you can see, there it is. There is that one problem that the camera picker reappears. That's because every time the view appears, we are displaying our image picker controller. Now, the issue is if we try and put this code in our view to load, let's try doing that. It may work, however, it's a bit risky, but let's see. As you can see, it won't work because there is, once when view to load appears, there is no view yet. We're simply loading all the data for the view. The actual window or the frame in which the view is held doesn't appear until view did appear, or view will appear. And we can't display a view until there is a view to display it on. So we need to work out a way to get around this. The easiest way to do this is by using a few variables and checking if a variable has already been loaded, well then we probably have something. But we're going to do it a slightly different way. By going in our view to appear, if self.imageView.image is equal to nil, equals equals, sorry. Then let's put all of this code inside the statements bubble. Else, and then inside the else statement, we'll just leave that blank. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we've got our image pick has appeared. Let's select the photo. And now, as you can see, even though the views appeared, the image picker has not. And if we run the application again, it will work exactly the same way. There's our image picker. If I select it, nothing happens. Well, we can just see the background image. So one thing you may have noticed is a slight lag between the V 
view loading where you see a white screen and the image picker actually appearing. One workaround will be to change this to view will appear and I'll show you how that works in a moment. So change did to will and then run it again. You'll see that there's slightly less lag and you see it more quickly. Although in cases as with now it does not work. So I'm going to leave it as view did appear. Now let me explain the code. When the view appears, we are checking if the image view contains an image. So if that image view on the screen, the one here, this white screen right now, if that, let me run it again to show you. So if this contains an image, which it did not, you can see it was white. So if the image on that image view is equal to nothing or nil, so there's just nothing there, then display the image picker. Then, um, if it is not equal to nil, meaning that there's an image in the image view, then in this application it's likely that the user's already uh, checked an image from the image picker and it's already in the image view. So don't display the image picker again because there's already an image. Inside here, all we're doing is we're creating an image picker controller. We're setting up its presentation style, and don't worry about what all of that means. We're setting its delegate self, and the reason we need to set a delegate is so we can use all of the what are called delegate methods. And that includes image picker controller did cancel and did finish picking media with info. We couldn't access those otherwise. It's like with an alert view where you need multiple buttons. To detect when an, another button is clicked, you need to use uh, sort of native alert view, uh, alert view methods or voids in this case. And to do that, you need to be the delegate, meaning that this view is now, as well as being a view, it's also an image picker controller. And then finally, we're presenting this image picker controller. We could have a few more options and see what they are. Just type image picker controller dot, and then if type head doesn't come up, just press the escape key and it will appear. And you can change a few things such as uh, types of navigation bars, status bar hidden, and a few other options like that, as well as source type. And you can see what that asks for. That's saying it may need to be a UI image picker controller source type. So if I click on that and then go UI image picker controller uh, source type and then I can see all the options with type head. So let's say that I wanted it to always be a photo library even if the camera was available. So even if I was running this on a brand new iPhone 5s I still wanted to use the photo library I could use that code and it will always go to the photo library. Currently what would happen is if there was no camera it will go to the photo library but otherwise it would by default start on the camera. Then we've got our delegate method so let me explain them. If the user clicks that cancel button on the image picker so let me show you that. If I click the cancel button then all that's going to happen is it's going to run all of this code in here and so all we're going to do is dismiss the view. So just pretty much hide it away. If it in, wasn't cancelled, but the user clicked on an image to select it, so image picker did finish picking media with info, which pretty much just means if the user selected an image, then we're going to create a UI image, and that's just an image. It's not an image view, so you can't display a UI image. You have to display the image in the image view. So to get the image, we're just going to go info, which is our NS dictionary, and that's a bit more complex. Essentially, the NS dictionary stores all the information about our image. And so we're trying to get the information from the original image. There's a few ways of getting the image, and this is one of them. But this is a really simple way because it only involves two lines of code to get the image from the image picker and then display it in an image view. So then, of course, we're going self.imageView, which is the image view that we put into our storyboard and that's on the view. We're setting its image.image. .image. We're going to set that to be image, which is this image here, the original image of the image picker, which essentially just means the image that the user selected. Then once all of that's done, we're going to dismiss our image picker controller, or so our photo library or our camera, and then that's it. And then it's going to go through view to appear again, but this time there'll be something in our image view, because we will have done this line of code. So it's going to go to the else statement, and there's nothing there, so it's just going to do nothing. So that's how all of the code works. And that's a really simple tutorial on how to use a UI image picker to access the camera and photo library. If you've got an Apple developer account, you'll be able to run this uh, app on your phone and you'll see that you can also use the built-in iOS photo picker which in iOS 7 will obviously include things like panorama and photo filters. In another tutorial I will show you how to create a custom camera picker however that's a bit more complex and quite different and you don't use a UI image picker controller you use a custom controller using AV Foundation. 
but I won't explain that now. If you have any questions, comment on this video, message us through YouTube directly, message us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash 99 cents app development, or visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.